Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving the math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 153. Day, day 3153. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 153. We are in the process of solving the math problem from practice test number 2 that you will find at the very end of the book on page number 483. Today we will pick up from question number 9. Yesterday we stopped at 8. Make sure the book is in front of you, turn to page number 483 and read the problem to you. Here is the gist of the problem. It says that 50, box, 50, boxes, 50 boxes each containing 30 parts were inspected. An inspector was given an assignment to inspect the 50 boxes each containing 50 parts. And his or her job was to make a record of how many uh, defective boxes were found in each box. And at the end of the process, an average of 1.12 defective parts per box was recorded. Average of 1.12 defective part was recorded. It shouldn't have to say per box because average is, is sort of redundant, but anyway, I already wrote it. Later, later on, it was found that they had made an error. Later, it was found that an error had been made. One, one defective part in one box, one defective part in one, one, one particular box was incorrectly recorded as 10. There were in fact there was in fact only one defective part in the given box, but the record when it when it was written down incorrectly somebody put down zero next to it and it was recorded as ten. Later on they caught it. Question is, this was the average that was reported to the management one point one two parts one one two part defective part per box. What's the real average? What's the real average? What is the correct average? And how does it compare to 0.94? Enough of the talk. Let's do it together, shall we? So we know, so here's the solution. So we know that the average that were recorded was 1.12. And therefore, and since there are since there were 50 boxes, therefore the total total defective parts, total defective parts must have been the total number that was recorded, that is, must have been 1.12 times 50. 1.12 times 50. Let's find out what that is, shall we? Instead of, instead of doing our 1.12 times 50, let's multiply this quantity by 100. It will be easier. Let's multiply, let's multiply top and bottom by 2. So now 50 times 2 is 100, 50 times 2 is 100, and 100, 100 times 1.12 is simply 112. And then don't forget we have a 2 at the bottom. So 11, 11 has 5 2's. 5 to the 10. After we take away 10 from the 11, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 2, becomes 12, and 12 has 6 parts. There you go. So apparently, the record was made that we have 56 defective parts in these 30 boxes. But in reality, of course, in reality, in reality, there were how many defective parts? In reality, there were, there were only 56 minus 10 because a 10 was recorded instead of 1. No, not 56 minus 10, but rather 56 minus 9. 47 defective part. Defective parts. A record was made that there were in fact 56 defective parts in these 50 boxes, but in reality there were only 47. Why do we subtract 9? Because in one particular box, on one particular box, there was one defective part. So there was one, but we recorded it as 10. In other words, we recorded 9 more than there were really. There's only one in there, but we recorded it as 10. We recorded 9 more than there were. So in reality, even though, even though total defective parts, average of 1.12 tells us that there are 56 defective parts, but in reality there were only 47 defective parts. So we just have to, all you have to do is divide 47 by... 9. Let's do it in the top. We don't need any of this now. So let's find out what the what the actual what the actual what the actual average is. So there were 47 parts out in the 50 boxes. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2. 
When we multiply top and bottom by 2, at the bottom we're going to end up with 100, which was the whole point. 47 times 2, 40 times 2 is 80, and 7 times 2 is 14. 14 plus 80 is 94. 94 over 100, which is 0.94 which is exactly what they give us in column B. In column B they have 0.94 and we just found out that the correct average is 0.94 also. Therefore the two quantities are equal, two quantities are equal and the correct answer is correct answer is C. That was it. That's that's how simple it was. I hope I hope that you realize that the way we just finished it, the way we went about it The way we went about it, we really turned it into a saga. There is a very straightforward and very quick way of figuring out what's going on in terms of figuring out what the correct average should be. And this is this is a quicker way. This is what we're going to do is, is more direct way. Let's see if you can follow it here. Here's what's going on. The average that was recorded was 1.12. But we know now that one box only had one part, but we recorded it as 10. In other words, we recorded nine more than there actually were. So the correct average, this is the recorded average, therefore the correct average, correct average must be what was recorded 1.12 minus the nine parts that were recorded that were not there, that has to be divided equally among 50 boxes. Nine over 50, that's it, that's your answer. Nine over 50. And if you, don't want to, if you don't want to waste your time trying to figure out 9 over 50, which I wouldn't either, just multiply top and bottom by 2. That trick always works. Multiply top and bottom by 2, and 9 times 2 is 18, so what we find is that it's 1.12 minus 18 over 100. 18 over 100 is 0.18. And you will see that 1.12 minus 1.12 minus 0.18 is, point, is 0 0.94. That's all that is required here. We didn't have to do all the other mumbo jumbo. Let's do the next one, shall we? Enough of the talk. Let's do the next one. Problem number 10. Problem number 10. Problem number 10 tells us that in a given year, it tells us that in a given year, Population of Colorado, population of Colorado, we were told, was approximately half that of half that of population of New Jersey. Population of Colorado was half the population of New Jersey, but instead they used the word and and the landmass of Colorado was approximately 14 times the land mass of New Jersey. The question simply is, the question simply is population density, population density of Colorado is approximately is approximately how many times that of New Jersey's how many times that of New Jersey this is a lot of writing for not much at all well it has half the population but 14 times the mass. If it has 14 times the land, 14 times. In other words, if the pop, if, if if the population of Colorado was same as the population of New Jersey, and if Colorado has 15 times the amount of land, then its density would have been 1 14th of Col 1 14th of uh, Colorado. The population density would have been 1 14th of New Jersey if they had the same mass. But not only it has, not only not only it has 14 times the amount of land but it only has half the population. So its density is 128, there is nothing really to do. Population density is 128. 
is 128 because it has 14 times the amount of land, it has, it has half the population and 14 times the amount of land is 128. I don't know what else we can do here, there's not really much to do. 60% of the people got this question right, 40% missed it. 60% got it right, 40% missed it. I don't know what else we can ex I can explain here. In the previous question I forgot to give you, the one that we just finished, oh, surprising, the question number 9, the question number 9 that we just finished, the percentile was 35. In question number 10, it was 60%. For example, for example, if you have a country A and country B, and if we are told, if we are told, let's do it on the blackboard actually very quickly, and if we are told, let's do, let's do one more similar one, if we have country A and country B, country A, country A and country B, and if you're told that country A has one-third the population of country, country B, and it has four times the amount of land, four times the amount of land, four times the amount of land, well, it has four times the amount of land and a third of the population as compared to this country, which means the population density, population density in A would be one-twelfth of the, of the density of the density of B. If they had the same, if they had the same, if they had the same population, if they had the same population, then given the fact that it has four times the amount of land, its population would have been one fourth. But not only it has four times the amount of land, but only third the population. Therefore, its population population density of A, it has a far more land. It has a four times the amount of land, and only a third of the people. Its population density is one twelfth of B. It's the same thing here. Colorado has half the population of New Jersey, and despite the fact that it has only half the population of, compared to the state of New Jersey, it has 14 times the amount of land. Therefore, for, one, for each square miles, there are only 1 20th of the number of people living in Colorado. Do you understand? So if we find that there were 28,000 people living per square mile in New Jersey, in Colorado, it will just be 1,000 people per square mile. That's what. Number 11 is the next one we're going to do. Number 11 is just too silly. This is on the next page, page number, we are on page number 484 now. We're given a parallel line, two parallel line, line L and M. And we are told, it tells you that L is parallel to M. We have two parallel lines, L and M. And we are told that this angle is equal to 2Y. And that angle is equal to 35. And the question simply is, how much is y? Well, there's not much to do here. We know that this angle has to equal that angle. When, when, when you have two parallel lines, this angle has to equal that angle. What else? What else do we know? We also know that uh, this angle right here has to equal that angle. But we are not interested in that. We are interested in the fact, we are interested in the fact that 2y, let's erase this part that we are not interested in. All, all that matters to us is that this angle and that angle they are equal, therefore 2y, 2y equals 35. If 2y equals 35 and we want to, find, value for, want to find, find the value of y, divide both sides by 2. 2 goes away and y equals 35 over 2. How many 2's does 3 have? 3 has 1, 2. After we take away 2 from 3, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 15. And 15 has 7 2's. 7 2's are 14. After we take away 14 from the 15, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That remainder of 1 must be divided by 2. So the answer is y is equal to 17 and a half. This was too easy, too simple, too simple, so simple in fact that here in number 11, the percentile was 84. In number 9, only 35% of the people got it right. Number 11, 85% of people got it right. And number 10 we sold it a while ago. Number 10 we sold it a while ago, where 60% of people got it right. Number 10 was 60%. That's all I want to do today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.